Welcome back. In the last video we talked about why maintaining a good balance of water is important for cells. So that was for maintaining a good shape and for maintaining a good level of water in cells for optimum um, chemical reactions to occur because otherwise it wouldn't be occurring. And this dot point, we're going to go over this uh, here. So explain why the removal of waste is essential for continued metabolic activity. I want to go quickly again over what metabolic activity means. That just means of how fast um, like how fast chemical reactions occur. So uh, if we have a optimum metabolic activity, that means our chemical reactions uh, occur at a really, really fast rate or a normal rate. So why do we need to remove waste for our, our chemical reactions to keep occurring at a really fast rate? That's basically what this one asks for. The first part was that we needed to remove nitrogenous waste. So remember nitrogenous wastes were from the breakdown of protein. So we have protein here, a long chain of amino acids. We break that down first into its individual parts, so P for protein. We break that down into amino acids, so A, A for amino acids. So from the long chain into single parts. And from there we break it down into ammonia. But again, remember ammonia was poisonous. So we don't want to keep much of this for too long. And then from ammonia, we go quickly into urea. Um, so the problem with uh, ammonia is that it increases the pH by a lot. So it increases our pH. And if we increase our pH, that means our enzymes stop working well. And if our enzymes stop working well, that means our metabolic activity has gone down. Um, but urea still increases our pH by a bit, but a lot less than ammonia does. So urea is still a bit problematic, but not as problematic as ammonia, which is why we converted from ammonia into urea as fast as possible. So these two steps happen as fast as possible. Now, but one of the reasons why we definitely want to get rid of urea, the problem is if you imagine urea being formed in cells, so this could be a liver cell here, if we have a continuous buildup of urea, right, urea is dissolved in water, so urea is a solute. The definition of a solute was here, was here, um, substances that dissolve in water. Right, so urea is definitely a solute, and if you remember from the last video, we said that um, water travels from a low solute, low solute, to high solute. So what happens in this picture if we have very few solutes outside the, in the watery component and um, very much inside? What way does water travel? So water would obviously travel from the outside into the cell. Right? So the cell itself would burst because you would have more and more water coming in because of that osmosis because urea is also a solute. So, um, and again, if, if you have cells bursting, would that be op ideal for metabolic activity? So probably not. So we want to make sure we get rid of that for two reasons, the two reasons I mentioned. So to maintain an optimum pH, that's for enzyme activity. And the other one was to maintain isotonic environments. So isotonic was referring to the inside solute amount being the same as outside solute amount. So you don't have this happening. We keep our shape well. And obviously, if this happens, then um, the, level, like the, the actual uh, cells won't burst or won't shrivel. So cells don't burst or shrivel. And that's good because if they do burst or shrivel, then the metabolic activity will go down. Don't burst or shrivel. So in a hyper or hypotonic solution, that would be different. In this case, it would be a hypotonic, so water would be going inside, and the cell would be bursting if we have too much urea inside. And we get, get rid of urea from the cells to make sure this doesn't happen. Now the other waste product was carbon dioxide. If you remember carbon dioxide, um, this equation, I've, I think it's come up a few times. So when carbon dioxide and water combine, so when these two combine, what happens is you have um, hydrogen ions forming and hydro hydrogen carbonate ions forming. If you remember from the first of this, I think it's the second or first uh, chapter, we said that most of carbon dioxide travels in, in plasma in this way the form of hydrogen carbon ions. 
Right? So that's something that, again, just a revision from one of the earlier ones. But on, one big problem is that um, too much carbon dioxide definitely lowers our pH because we produce more of these. So this is one of the big problems, lowers our pH. And if you remember this graph, one of these graphs, they've come up a few times as well. That's your optimum function. So on the one, hand, so one side, we've got enzyme activity. On the other side, we've got the pH. And if you look at where the optimum function for most of our body is, if you look at that area here, which is the optimum levels, you go, that's, so that's where our enzymes work the best. And if we go down, that would be roughly the pH of 7. So if they lower our pH, if carbon dioxide lowers our pH, that lowers our metabolic, metabolic activity. So low pH will lower our metabolic activity. And the same thing with a too high pH. That will also lower our metabolic activity. So we want to keep it at that ideal level. Right, so ammonia or urea might bring it too high, which would decrease our metabolic activity. And uh, carbon dioxide brings it too low, but that also decreases our metabolic activity. And remember why it decreases our metabolic activity? Because this is enzyme, is an enzyme here. We've got an enzyme and a substrate. So E for enzyme, S for substrate. And when they bind, obviously they get the substrate will get broken into two. And you have a chemical reaction that has occurred. Um, now the problem is we have our active binding site here, which needs to fit. So this part here, that where the, these two fit, that's our active site. And these two need to fit in perfectly. But the problem is if the pH is too high or too low, the enzyme becomes denatured. And this does not happen anymore. This can't happen, so chemical reactions don't occur. So this is a low metabolic activity here because we have no more chemical reactions occurring um, because the enzymes are not working anymore. So to cover this stop point again, explain why the removal of waste is essential for continued metabolic activity. We need to get rid of it to maintain our optimum pH because our optimum pH is required for enzymes to work at their ID level. And if enzymes don't work at their ID level, then our metabolism goes down. Right, so met our metabolic activity goes down if enzymes stop working. And the other part was to maintain an isotonic environment, especially if we have too much urea, so one of our waste products, too much urea, then we have an accumulation of urea in our cells. That means water will travel into our cells as well because of osmosis, and that will mean our cell will burst. And obviously, our cells bursting is not good for metabolic activity. It means the chemical reactions inside the cells will stop because the cell has died. Right, so two, um, our two waste products are nitrogenous waste and carbon dioxide. And the reasons why they need to be gotten rid of were just explained earlier. So I hope that was helpful.